You say, sir, that one should look at things totally and not fragmentarily, and that such observation is possible only when the brain is completely attentive. What should I do now to make my mind behave rightly? You say, sir, that one should look at things totally and not fragmentarily, and that such observation is possible only when the brain is completely attentive. What should I do now to make the brain behave rightly? Good Lord. First of all, sirs, isn't it obvious that we look at things partially? Right? That's clear. You look at your wife, your husband, your friend, partially. And our life is fragmented, right? Say one thing, do another. Go to all the temples with their nonsense and be a very good lawyer. The two are in, incompatible. You follow? I don't know if you follow all this. So we live a life of hypocrisy. You may not like to be pointed that out, but that's a fact. The pretensions that we have of being very religious and yet be ambitious, right? Be competitive, ready to kill another, violence, and all the rest of it. So there's great contradiction in our life. And that contradiction shows our brain thinks in contradictions, which is fragmentation, right? You understand this? So is it possible for the brain to observe totally? It's not possible when the fragmentary when you are living a fragmentary life, you cannot possibly see totally. Quite, that's so simple. Right? So, can you not live a hypocritical life? It's very simple. Simple question, which is, can you live? with great integrity. Never, never saying something you don't really understand, which you have not lived, experienced. You understand? Don't repeat what others have said. Have ideals and never live those ideals, that is hypocrisy, right? A man who says, I'm violent, but I'm trying to be non-violent, that is hypocrisy, right? Right, sir? You don't agree with that? We're all very silent. Oh, no, it's not a metaphor. It's not a metaphor. To live a life as we do, 
It is fragmentary. Right? It's so obvious. And therefore, our outlook on life is fragmentary, broken up. And that indicates saying one th- which indicates saying one thing and doing another. You know this, don't you? So how can a mind, brain, which is <coughs> fragmentary, and thought is fragmentary, right? Would you agree to that? Of course. Thought which is fragmentary, and anything thought does is fragmentary. Right? Because thought is the result of experience, knowledge, memory, and the response of memory is thought. And thought brings its action, which is fragmentary, and this fragmentary process of thought must create hypocrisy. Right? Say one thing, do another. Think one thing, and pretend to to say, to do something else. This is the nature of thought. I do not know if you realize thought can never be honest. Right? Because thought in itself is fragmentary. And the questioner asks, as the brain cannot perceive the whole, then what is one to do? Quieten the brain, have patience with it. Don't pretend, that's all. Don't, don't put on masks. When you meet an important person, you put on a mask, and very, very respectful. And when you meet your servant, you kick him. So, to have a brain not fragmented means it has to slow down, watch, patient, look at it, observe what is happening to you. Then to see something whole, completely, you can only do that when you hear completely. You understand? Are you listening to what the speaker is saying now completely? No, you are not. That is, to listen without translating what he is saying to suit your own condition, or to listen, or listening, you say, well, I've heard that before. Or when you listen, not say, this is what I've read in books, which, are, which, all, <coughs> which all indicates that you're not listening. Right? Obviously. So to listen completely, that means <coughs> You have to give attention to what you are listening to, which, indi- <coughs> which means that you are facing the problem. 
Right? Are you? Or your mind is wandering off, you are doing all kinds of tricks. Yes, sir. To be aware, <coughs> to be aware of yourself choicelessly, to look at yourself, the gestures you are making, the positions you are taking, the way you sit and look. To observe entirely, totally, without any motive, direction, that is possible. 